Hey, it's me again. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Appreciate you uh, listening for a quick discussion on tumor markers. Um, so what is a tumor marker? Really, a tumor marker is any substance that a tumor produces um, that we can take advantage of to help either identify that the tumor is present or um, that it's been cured. Um, so what do we use it for? It's used for screening high-risk groups, uh, uh, Particularly, and in fact, really the only one that's approved for this is, is PSA um, for screening uh, high-risk uh, groups. It's also used as an aid in diagnosis. Um, if they're doing it on tissue, they, they can do it to stage or confirm uh, histopathology, so helpful in identifying, you know, where the tumor is. Um, generally, these are carcinoma markers, less so in sarcomas. Um, it's used to monitor response. So that's, that's a, a primary use of, uh, of tumor markers. So a proper use of tumor markers is um, checking response to therapy um, and looking for recurrence. So those are really the two primary uses of, of tumor markers. Um, so quickly, there's a bunch of different tumor markers. There's a lot of details that we're not going to cover. I think of AFP as being useful in liver and testicular carcinomas. Um, CA199 in pancreatic um, and, and uh, colon tumors. Um, CA125, I think of as ovarian cancer. Um, CEA, colorectal. Um, none of these tumor markers are 100% specific for a single tumor. So they're, they, they are, again, useful for, you know, if you've done surgery and you want to see was the surgery curative, you can monitor an AFP or a CEA and, and look to see if, if the tumor is growing or if it's metastasized and growing somewhere else. Um, PAP is, uh, it used to be our, our main uh, tumor marker for prostate cancer, and really it's been replaced with, with prostate-specific antigen or PSA. Um, it is still used in some stains um, and staging for tissue that's been removed, um, but really isn't used that much. as it, It's not used as, as a screening test. So we talked about HCG as being our, our pregnancy marker. It is also a tumor marker. Um, uh, as we remember, the beta chain is what makes HCG different from TSH, um, LH, and FSH. Um, Obviously, it goes up in pregnancy. It also goes up in trophoblastic disease. And so if you have done surgery um, to remove a hydatiform mole or a choriocarcinoma, um, you're going to monitor HCGs, and you're going to want to see those go back down to baseline. If you see an increase of HCG, that says that that cancerous tissue is still around, and they're going to need a secondary treatment. It also shows up in germ cell uh, tumors of the testes, so HCG does show up in some males. Um, PSA, as I said, it's really our only approved, only, only screening tumor marker that's approved by the FDA. Um, it's uh, probably our best known uh, tumor marker, um, but the problem with it is, is that it's also elevated in BPH, so benign prostatic hypertrophy. And so there's a lot of controversy about, you know, is PSA useful as a wide screen or are we identifying benign disease that, uh, you know, most males get prostate cancer, most males don't die of prostate cancer. And so that's really a decision that's uh, currently advised to be made between the primary care doc and, and, the, and the patient. Um, so it's often used with a digital rectal exam um, as a screening test. So that's what the DRE is. Um, there's a, a gray zone, so um, between 4 and 10 nanograms per mil is, is the gray zone, and that's where it might be useful to look at what we call a free PSA. And so it's, that's, that's PSA that's not complex with alpha-1 antichymotrypsin. Um, so some people would say maybe even all the way up to 25 uh, micrograms per liter or nanograms per mil. So less free is a bad sign. So if you have less free, if, if your percent PSA that's free is low, then that's really uh, more indicative of, of an invasive uh, situation and, and maybe warrants more aggressive therapy. Thyroglobin, thy thyroglobulin is the protein where T4 and T3 are synthesized. 
Um, so this is a protein that's really only found in the thyroid gland. And so if you have a thyroid cancer and you have surgically removed the, the, the uh, thyroid gland, um, you, your thyroid globulin should go down to undetectable. Um, and so we use thyroglobulin as a tumor marker to look for recurrence. So do you have a measurable amount of thyroglobulin after doing surgery on the patient? Um, so that's pretty much what I was saying. We're using it for uh, recurrence. Um, what's interesting about and, and complicated about thyroglobulin is, is that you develop autoantibodies against thyroglobulin. And so if that autoantibody is binding to the epitope that's the same as your assay epitope, then you can get a false negative result. And that's exactly what you don't want because you don't want to miss a metastatic um, lesion. And so 25% of the cases, you develop autoantibodies. And so when you measure a thyroglobulin, you also want to know, does the patient have autoantibodies? Um, if they do, then there's other ways to do it. One of those is mass spectrometry, where you actually digest the protein and you look for fragments. And so in that case, you can still measure thyroglobulin in the presence of uh, autoantibodies. HER2 nu is, is a breast cancer marker. It's an epidermal growth factor receptor. Um, and so basically, if you're HER2 nu positive, then the patient has a good chance of responding to Herceptin, which is um, an, a monoclonal antibody against the HER2, which inactivates it. So... Um, so if, you're, if patients are positive for HER2 new, then they are candidates for Herceptin. Um, and that's typically done on breast tissue. The last tumor marker I'm going to talk about are ERPR, so estrogen receptors and progesterone receptors. When they talk about triple negative breast cancer, they're talking about HER2 new negative, ER, and PR negative. So um, some of these hormones are, are um, steroid sensitive, and so... Um, it's typically done by immunohistochemistry on um, breast tissue. Um, and basically, if you have a positive response that says that they're going to respond to um, endocrine therapy, uh, CIRMs, selective estrogen uh, receptor modulators. So that's a, a quick overview of tumor markers, and I appreciate you tuning in.